Annie read some of the words of the Apostle Paul. Uh, I want to read uh, a few more words from him on the previous chapter. A after a litany of things that he had experienced, and as you know, uh, he talks about it, having been born into a pure-blooded Jewish family, had the finest education that was offered anybody at that day, set at the feet of Gamaliel, graduate of the University of Tarsus, well-trained, uh, must have had a dynamic personality. He had a great love then for God in his early training, and then he had that incredible encounter with Jesus Christ on the Damascus freeway. <laughs> on the, and it is, it's, that's what it is, and he was out there, and, and Jesus appeared to him. Uh, and then he writes, I once thought all these things were important, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord. I have discovered everything else, counting it all as garbage. I'm reading this morning, I took the privilege to read from the New Living Translation, and the New Living Translation says, I count it all as garbage. We're reading, and now we're using this as our uh, Bible here, our speaking Bible, and the one-year Bibles that you received, um, the English Standard Version, and the English Standard Version says, I consider them all rubbish, so that I may have Christ and become one with Him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with Himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings, sharing in His death, so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. No, dear friends, I am still not all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things, and if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. I just love that. If you don't agree with it all, so what? You just hang in there. Stick with him. And it'll, it'll come. I, isn't Paul nice? He's so gentle to people. And not like some people you might know. But he's just, he's so, he's so gentle. And he said, this, that's okay. It'll come along. And then uh, Annie read that great verse from Hebrews 12.1. Let us throw off. I, I should have, I should have said to Annie, Annie hit, hit that one heavy. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. I can see the sun about to rise. We are just about to enter a new year in a little over two days. We are ending an incredible journey. It took us in two days. Earl, I, I, I heard you last Tuesday with a man. I heard you. It took us 365 years. I mean, 365 days, excuse me. 365 days and six hours. Don't forget, don't forget the six hours. Our year is 365 days and six hours. And from the beginning of this year, in our journey that takes us now, almost, I can see it. I can see the dawn of the new year and the sun setting now on the old year. 365 days and six hours on this incredible journey. <laughs> and some, how does all that happen? How did that all happen? Somebody had to figure it out. Somebody designed the whole thing. Somebody put this great universe in motion 
and we can depend on it. And in the morning, I watch the sun, I watch the daylight start breaking. And I say to myself so many mornings, it happened again. We, 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 we rotated again. We, we, we spun around again on our 365 and six hour day trip. We, and it's daylight again. God, somebody had to do that. I believe that it is, it's a God that put all that into motion. I have a little problem with those who believe that there was some cosmic explosion one day and out popped this little sphere that we call planet Earth. It just happened to be out here. And here we came out of the slime and the mud and the swamp. <laughs> and here I am today. Isn't that great? It's stupid. Somebody had to, somebody had to put this whole thing in. Now, I have never been to the Ford factory. I've never seen one made. So I'm going to, somebody says to me, how do they make a Ford? And I'm going to answer you this morning, like the evolutionist. There was a garbage dump one day, and there was a bunch of junk in there, glass and tin and rubber and all this stuff. And one day, it was a very hot day, and the sun was shining down on that piece of glass. And it got hotter and hotter. And that glass, un all of a sudden, underneath that glass, there was an explosion. And out jumped a Ford car. <laughs> now, the way some of those in the past rattled, you might think that. <laughs> but, but isn't it amazing isn't it amazing that the, when it blew out of the garbage dump, that the, f that the steering wheel is in the front seat and not the back, and that the windshield is made out of glass and not rubber? Isn't it interesting that the, that the fenders got up above the wheels instead of on the roof? No, no, if that's not amazing at all. You know why? Because somebody planned it the way it is. And so it's not amazing to me about this great universe because somebody planned it and somebody put it all together. And that's the God I know today. Um, I want to, uh, you know, this week has been, you know, it's, uh, 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 Christmas always, yeah, any holiday, but Christmas, it kind of upsets things. You, do, you forget what day of the week. I, I thought I lost a day and then all of a sudden on Friday I said, oh, Nancy, this is great. I got an extra day this week. I thought it was Saturday. I was so happy, and uh, I had an extra day. I, I didn't know what day it was. And uh, we, we, don't know what, we didn't know what day the garbage was. You know, our garbage got j j scheduled for Wednesday. What, what day is it going to come now? They're going to do Friday. What, when are they coming? Well, some of our neighbors got so excited, and they needed to. Uh, they, they put theirs out on Christmas Eve. I, I, a big pile of garbage out there. And they'd had a big party next door, which I was invited to. And uh, uh, so here was all this stuff out there because they didn't want to miss the garbage pickup. Oh, they, 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 one of their relatives. Uh, I, I get along better sometimes at these. I don't really like parties. And so I, I, I talk to the dog quite a bit. Yeah, he, yeah, and it was the cutest dog you ever saw. You just big, a little... Uh, extra skin bulldog and so I got with him and we were just talking and he was so attentive he'd roll his eyes and he'd look at me and and uh, so the next day the little boy their little grandson was out with Wilson the dog I know more dogs names than I do people and uh, and so he was out with Wilson and I said hey Wilson how are you and Wilson ran away from me well I said to the little grandson I said that's interesting because Wilson and I had a good visit the other night Oh, he said, Wilson doesn't have a good memory at all. <laughs> don't, you, don't, don't you just love kids? They, they got, they, they, they've, got, they've got an answer for everything. But as we, as we are approaching our new year, it's a wonderful time to take out the garbage. Are you willing to do that? You'll get a chance this morning to do that. It seems that sometimes we get comfortable living with our garbage. And we get, we get attached to it. And we don't want to lose it. Uh, we're clutter collectors. And we like it. Uh, I've kind of made this a um, traditional um, 
thing at this Sunday of the year to share with you uh, the late Irma Bombeck's delightful little essay on leave the baggage behind. I just love what she wrote. She said, for years I've studied the symbol of the new year. A smiling baby wearing a diaper and a top hat. What does it mean? A beginning of life? A time of in innocence? A scenario for change? Then it hit me. For years I have been overdressed for the new year. I enter it with shoulders bent, swathed in all the ills of the previous year. And I, when I can't wear them all on my body, I lug them along in heavy boxes and suitcases, kicking them along with my foot to make sure all of them make it into the next year of my life. Wrapped around my neck is a mantle of guilt. Some of it going back as far as 1940. Guilt for the time that my parents gave me a savings bond for my high school graduation when I wanted a silver charm bracelet and I threw the same savings bonds on the floor. The hair shirt of self-pity is uncomfortable, but for years has provided me with enough ammunition to bring tears to the eyes of my husband and children. To discard it would be unthinkable. After all, self-pity, if you do it right, takes a long time to amass. The belt of prejudice is an old one and encompasses anyone who does not agree with every single word I have ever said. I feel naked without it. The larger foot locker contains anger. A true, a lot of it doesn't fit anymore, but I hang on to it just in case I'm caught short. Adorning all of these are the jewels of frustration over things that I can never do anything about, but which I wear like medals to torture myself. And of course, the biggest piece of baggage contains old grudges that I shift through each year like old photographs and press flowers. The critic who was unkind. The one mistake from a friend I want to forgive. The trust, the trust I gave a child that was abused. The harsh words from a family member that I refuse to forget. Grudges, many of them antiques, that I plan on handing down to my children. Each year of my life, the load gets heavier and heavier to carry into the new year. Once, I, once around March, I almost sank, but stubbornly I hung on to every bit of New Year's past. Frankly, I don't know if I can face the new year without my clothes on. I don't know if I can check in to the new year without luggage. Can I look at old friends and see them for the first time? Can I keep my eyes forward and not look back? Do I have the guts to emerge with nothing on but a smile and a top hat? I'm going to try. Will you? I think that's good. And that's what I want to talk about today. And maybe some, some, uh, H HB, that, HB, that was, you, he emailed me. Not only did he rub it in about that I didn't get to go to the Clipper Trailblazer game. Not only that. But then he said, I think I better get home so I can get a lot of garbage bags before Sunday. I hope you brought one, at least, that we can, uh, we can throw some stuff in. Uh, I, I want to take out the garbage of doubt. Do you remember God's word to Joshua in the Old Testament? As he now had become the assigned leader to take the children of Israel, as they had been wondering now in the wilderness for 40 years after leaving Egypt. And uh, it was a scary situation. There were giants out there, tremendous challenges. And uh, the word of the Lord came to him and said, get ready. Cross the Jordan River. Lead these people into the land which I am ready to hand over to them. I will be with you. I will not abandon you or leave you alone. Be strong and brave. Carefully obey all the words of my servant Moses, how he charged, that he charged you to keep. Do not swerve from the right or to the left, so that you may be successful in all you do. The law must not leave your lips. You must memorize it day and night, so you can carefully obey all that is written in it. Then you will prosper and be successful. I repeat, be strong and brave. 
don't be afraid and don't panic for I am the Lord your God I am with you in all you do boy take that one for take that one to, for 2014 hang that one on your refrigerator and see what that's going to do for you put that in, on your mirror in the bathroom when you wake up some morning with doubts and wondering are you going to there, there's a lot of giants out there and we've never been there before and there's a lot of stuff going on remember when Nehemiah was, was to reconstruct the, the wall of Jerusalem that had lain in ruins for years and the doubters came to him and the doubters said the strength of the laborers is giving out and there's so much rubble that we can't rebuild the wall and Nehemiah said after I looked things over I stood up to the people and I said don't be afraid of them remember the Lord who is great and awesome we look out today at all the rubble around us we look out at the attacks on the church the deterioration of morality some of the scary stuff that's going on I got so um, in fact I called my son last night again I initiated the call they had to refinance their house because of the affordable health insurance it's what they are required to do they had to go out and refinance because they couldn't afford it there's scary times for all of us in this world but my word to you today is the word of God that came to Joshua be not afraid because the Lord our God is with us and he's going to go before us so kids hang on what have I to fear when I've got a great God that is leading me and helping me secondly I want to take out the garbage of pessimism you say well that's just not the way I was put together <laughs> I always see the glass half empty instead of half full well take another look you know we make a choice on how we how we face life so why don't you smile why don't you laugh a little why don't you enjoy life why don't you quit looking for the knocking in the motor and enjoy life if, oh I got another pain I must be having something why you all quit it we've all got pains <laughs> but let's, let's, let's look to the bright side of what God's going to do for us I want to take out the garbage of hate why would I want to carry all that garbage of what someone did to me or said to me or to you and s take it into the new year don't allow people's unkind words to destroy you that's their problem it's not yours I I've told you this story before but this this week while I was getting ready for this morning um, I thought again uh, when I when I was at Northwest University uh, one of my most enjoyable moments was the night that I welcomed the new freshmen and their families who brought them and I did an address uh, that night it was always fun because I would see all these bright shiny faces and parents who were some of them were going to cry the next day um, I did I did when my boy went to college I cried and then, and then when he went away to grad school, I cried again. And I said to myself, when are you ever going to grow up? But anyway, uh, here's all these parents and these bright, shiny faces. And as I'm walking in to make my address to this group, as I'm coming through the lobby, a big, burly guy had whiskers, and great big guy. I'm greeting people as I'm walking through, and he said as I shook his hand it's nice to meet you under different circumstances and I said we have met before he said yes I met you and he named a city <laughs> and I had I had served as the state superintendent of 200 churches and um, I had to go to this city to handle a situation and I guess he didn't like what I did 
And uh, so I, I didn't want to get involved in the conversation. He, he didn't say, uh, he, I, he just said where he met me. And I kept moving. I didn't want to talk about it. Because <laughs> I, I got a speech to deliver. And the next day, I was walking through the dining uh, hall. And the parents were there with their kids and <laughs> other students coming. And as I was walking through, greeting people, I came by their table. And this husband and wife and uh, incoming freshmen were there having lunch. And um, I said hello. And he looked up at me and tears started rolling down his face. And he said, I want you to forgive me. So I got down on my knees so I could be eye level with the family at the table. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't have anything to forgive you for. He said, yes. I need forgiveness. I've never liked you. I almost said, why don't you join the crowd? No, I didn't. <laughs> but he, he, said, he said, I've never liked you since you came to our city. I didn't appreciate how you handled that situation. And I've been angry with you ever since. That was years ago. And here he is carrying all this garbage. And I said, of course, I forgive you. He, he didn't hurt me. I, I, I didn't know it. If I hadn't known it, he still wouldn't have hurt me. Because I just do the best I can at, in the situation where I am. Well, that's all we can do. And you've got to leave the rest to God and whatever. But here he was carrying that garbage with him that was eating his insides out. People, don't do it. Get the lid off this morning. If you've got any of that kind of garbage in your life, get the lid off and get rid of it. And don't carry it any farther. It'll kill you. It'll, it'll destroy you physically, spiritually, emotionally. You will be a wreck. So get rid of it and get happy. Well, I wanted to, to take out the garbage of fear. Remember, fear is the absolute opposite of faith. You can't have fear and faith at the same time. Uh, the last book of the Bible, listen to these words. I mean, th these are pretty serious words. But the fearful and the unbelieving, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur, and that's the second death. People that have fear and deny faith are classified with some of the most horrible people. Deuteronomy 31 8 says, Do not be afraid or terrified because our Lord, the Lord our God, goes with us and he will never forsake us or leave us. That's your promise. Uh, fifth, are you keeping score? Uh, you're not. Uh, uh, the, 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 fifth, the fifth item I want to take to the garbage can today, I want to take out the garbage of regret. Don't live in what might have been or what should have happened. Or, why didn't I? Or, why did I? Y you can't live that way. We can't live with regrets. God says, I will remember their sins no more. So, what are you doing with them? If you've asked God to forgive you, you should move on and say, God, thank you for what you forgot and forgave. Help me now as I move on into 2014. Uh, sixth, I want to take out the garbage of grief. Now, I want to be very sensitive this morning, and I'm looking around this room because I know, because I've walked with you. I've walked with several of you through the valley of grief. And I want to, I want to help you this morning, and I am, believe me, I'm not picking on anybody. I only want to help you in our walk through grief. To grieve is healthy and helpful. If you don't grieve, you suppress things within you. So, sometimes it's got to get out. So to grieve is normal, and that's healthy. But as we were preparing a little card last night and slipped that poem in it to Nancy's cousin, whose, hus whose, whose husband died, uh, he, the wife of the husband, I slipped that in there. But I said, Joyce, we sorrow, but not as those that have no hope. Because Clarence loved the Lord. He, he loved the Lord dearly. And 
Uh, and so we saw, and, and so it's healthy to sorrow. So, but, but it's unhealthy, listen to me, it's unhealthy to continue to live in a state of grief and sorrow. That is unhealthy. And I do not believe that it is particularly God-pleasing. Uh, the Bible says there's a time to weep and a time to dance. There's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. So cry but, and then laugh. Weep and then dance. The Bible says that very clearly. Somebody sent me this week, uh, sent me this this week. I have in my hands two boxes which God gave me to hold. He said, put all your sorrows in the black box and all your joys in the gold. I heeded his words and in the two boxes both my joys and sorrows I stored. But though the gold became heavier each day, the black was as light as before. With curiosity I opened the black and I wanted to find out why. And I saw in the base of the box a hole which my, my sorrows had fallen out by. I showed the hole to God and mused, I wonder where my sorrows could be. He smiled a gentle smile and said, My child, they're all here with me. I asked God why he gave me the boxes, why the gold and the black with the hole. My child, the gold is for you to count your blessings. The black is for you to let go. So there comes a time that we've got to let go. And maybe this is your day to let go. I don't even know who it was. I, I have no recollection. I just remember the, the encounter. I don't know where it was. But somebody came to me and expressing their deep grief and all the pain and everything they were going through. I thought somebody had died last week. And I said, oh, when did they die? They said nine years ago. Nine years ago. You see, there comes a time. We've got to get over it. We've got to move on. Uh, you know my... It's, it sometimes it gets hard for me to talk about it. But my... Um, my good friend. And Eldon, I will never forget the day, the Sunday after Glenn died. You were so kind to me. Because Glenn and I sang in this church. My friend Glenn Cole. And I knew Eldon had not heard about him. Eldon loved Glenn. He loved his ministry here. He loved his music. And I slipped down by Eldon and I said, Eldon, Glenn Cole died this way. And you know what Eldon did? He, he quote the, quoted the words of a song that Glenn and I had sung. He said, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Oh, that blessed me. Because Eldon remembered that. But, and... Um, so I was, a little, I was a little worried about how Mary Ann would do because Glenn was a, Glenn was a powerful guy. And um, so we were with Mary Ann recently. And I was so proud of her because oh, Glenn ran the world. <laughs> he, he, he was in charge. In fact, Mary Ann, in the Christmas, Christmas thing they set out with all their grandkids and all this, there was a picture of Glenn and Mary Ann. She said, we honor our leader. He was. He led the path. But Mary Ann said to Nancy and me the other day, you know, Glenn's gone. And I'm here. And life is going on, and I'm going to live life. Mary Ann moved into a new house last week. Yeah, she, she, she's moving on. She said, those, those were great years. And he was a great, great husband and a great leader and a great everything. But I'm moving on in life. Oh, that was great. Because I'm a little worried about her. But isn't that, isn't that a way to live? We move on. We move on in life. i got to close. The garbage can is getting full. And the hour and the hours getting late. i got one more piece of garbage. I think we need to get rid of the garbage of guilt. You remember, some of you younger people will remember better than me. You remember, I, we read it at school. I love the story because I like that kind of stuff in, the, in those days especially. You remember Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart? <laughs> this guy in this story had killed somebody. And uh, nobody knew who he did it. He got away with it. And he completely covered up his crime. Except for one thing. Guilt. 
and he would lay down at night and he could hear that heart of that guy beating. Remember the story? And he'd go to bed and he, he thought it was underneath the, the floor, in the, under the floor. And I think, I can't remember the story fully. Did he tear the floor up once to find out if, he, if the guy was, the heart was down there beating? But he could hear this heart beating. There was no heart beating. It was guilt that was grabbing him and beating him to death. And that's what guilt will do. But I know where you can get rid of it. I know a place where sins are washed away. I know a place where night is turned to day and burdens are lifted and blind eyes made to see by the wonder working power of the cross of Calvary and today if you have guilt in your life if you're carrying stuff with you don't, don't do it, don't take it any further lay it at the foot of the cross this morning and give it to Jesus and let him take it and let him wash you in his blood and give you a brand new start.